The clues we have on a new state of play happening this month, Sony details PlayStation Portal launch, Embracer closes Legendary Studio after 30 years, and some quick updates on upcoming games. All that and more in today's PlayStation news, let's get to them. In the previous video we talked about a rumored state of play given industry insider Jeff Grubb's comments on the PS Plus price hike. These state of play rumors every month usually feel very random, but Sony has actually held state of play events in September, a few days before the Tokyo Game Show. Last year it was focused on Japanese developers and had the God of War Ragnarok story trailer at the end. There have been small hints that seem to point out that there could be something happening this month, including Insomniac replying to a fan to hang tight for Spider-Man 2 news and confirming to another there will be new content before the release date. Sony may look to do the last push of marketing with about a month to go for launch, which would put it around TGS week before September 21st. Spider-Man 2 is not the only first party game releasing this fall, as they also have Helldivers 2, and as of the latest update for the game in July, it's still targeting 2023, which is almost over. Furthermore, pre-order pages for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth have started to appear in online retailers, so we could be getting more news, and considering it's targeting early 2024, we could even get a release date. Add on top of that the already leaked new PS5 model that could also be announced soon, although I'm starting to doubt it would launch this year given they are pushing for PlayStation Portal this fall. Do you believe rumors of a new state of play this month? Voice your opinion in the comments or vote on the poll in the community tab. Let's go back to PlayStation Portal because Sony finally gave the pre-order and launch details for the new device that lets you remote play from your PS5 or Wi-Fi. The $200 device is now up for pre-order on the PlayStation Direct Store in the US, UK, France, Germany, Austria, Belgium, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Italy, Spain and Portugal. It will also be on other select retailers in the same countries as well as Canada and Japan on September 29, with further regional availability to be announced at a later date. The PlayStation Portal Remote Player launches this November 15. Moving on, Sony let everyone know of a PlayStation Plus price increase in the middle of probably one of the worst lineups in the past four years, something that has generated a huge backlash from fans with some posting on social media and Reddit they will cancel their subscriptions. But there's someone happy with all of this, their stockholders. Bloomberg has reported that after the announcement Sony's shares have risen around 3.4%, the most they have in the past month. According to CLSA analyst Amit Garg, Sony could end up with an additional $688 million annually out of this price increase. The goal of every company is to make money of course, but up to 35% increase all of a sudden seems like they are punishing their own customers. I ask here on the channel if you will still subscribe to Plus after the new prices are into effect, and as of recording 45% of you are still keeping your subs in the same tier or term, 13% will lower it, 13% will take a decision once their sub expires, 23% is cancelling upon their sub ending, and 6% are currently not subscribed. Well if you still find value in the games you get even with the price increase, good for you, and personally on option 3 and will decide once my sub ends, dropping to extra in any case I decide to keep it. In some really sad news, developer Volition announced the closure of the studio effective immediately. The studio has been around for 30 years, first known as Parallax Software from 1993 to 1996, and Volition from 1996 onwards. They were responsible for franchises like Summoner, Red Faction, and of course Saints Row. Volition shared a post on LinkedIn explaining that this past June Embracer Group announced a restructuring program to strengthen Embracer and maintain its position as a leader in the video game industry. As part of that program they evaluated the strategic and operational goals and made the difficult decision to close Volition effective immediately. This restructuring was a result of a transformative partnership falling through for parent company Embracer, where they hoped to earn $2 billion and the company had to lower its forecast due to that and game delays. Volition was also an easy target for closure given the mixed reception to the Sensro reboot last year, 
and they ended up being transferred from publisher Deep Silver to Gearbox in the aftermath last November. The press release also said they will support their staff with job assistance to transition into new positions within the industry, and they also thank customers and fans for all their support over the years. This seems to be the beginning of dark times for all developers under the Embracer umbrella, with another report saying the company also made some cuts on the publishing side of Gearbox. Here's hoping for the best for everyone affected and those remaining as part of Embracer. Now time for some quick updates. Ex-Bioware developer Josh Hendricks, who worked on the original Mass Effect trilogy, Andromeda, Dragon Age Inquisition and Anthem, has joined Soccer Punch after more than 14 years of being at the Canadian studio and being laid off earlier this year. So now we can expect his contributions on either the next Ghost of Tsushima or any of their mystery projects. Capcom has revealed its skill for the Tokyo Game Show. They will be holding physical shows from September 21st to 23rd and a 50-minute online show on kickoff day. It will feature Resident Evil 4 for PSVR 2, Exo Primal, Street Fighter 6, Dragon's Dogma 2 and more. Ubisoft is finally launching Beyond Good and Evil, but no, not that one. The ESRB has created a new version of the original Beyond Good and Evil as part of the game's 20th anniversary. The game was previously remastered for PS3 and Xbox 360 in 2011, and it would launch for PS4, PS5, Xbox Series, Switch and PC soon. If you are playing Baldur's Gate 3 next week, you are going to have to make a lot of room on your PS5. PlayStation Game Sites on Twitter has shared that the download size for the game is 108 gigs, which is a bit higher than the PC version at 97, but lower than the installation file and requires space on Steam at 121 and 150 GB respectively. The Ratatan Kickstarter campaign has officially ended, and the Patapon Spiritual Successor raked in $1.5 million, despite their original pledge being only close to $135,000. They completed 23 out of the 24 stretch goals, and you can look forward to the game reaching consoles around April 2025. Gearbox is launching a new Borderlands collection with all 6 games in the series and all DLC. The bundle dubbed the Borderlands Collection Pandora's Box is out now, detail only, and priced at 150 bucks, but available for 60 for a limited time. There's also an upgrade option on all platforms. On PlayStation if you own the Game of the Year Edition, The Handsome Collection or Borderlands 3 either physical or digital, you can complete the collection for $30. Galvanic Games and Devolver Digital have announced a release date for Wizard with a gun. The co-op sandbox survival set in a magical wilderness with dangerous creatures and arcane mysteries will be out for PS5, Xbox Series and PC this October 17. Power Wash Simulator is going back to the future as part of their latest DLC for the game. It will include new stages inspired by the film, such as Doc Brown's Band, The Time Machine, Hill Valley Clock Tower, the whole max theater and dogs time train the dlc is priced at 7.99 dollars and will launch later this year cd project has detailed what you can expect as part of the cyberpunk phantom liberty update for free and paid users if you are not buying the dlc yet you can look forward to redesigned skill trees and perks new vehicle combat and car chases combat ai improvements ui and ux changes and a lot more the paid part of the expansion gives you a new district, a brand new story, new quest, a new relic skill tree, level cap increased to 60 among others. And those are the PlayStation stories for today. What are your thoughts on them? Let us know in the comments below, give this video a thumbs up or down to let me know your feedback, check out more content you may like as well, and subscribe for more on PlayStation. Thank you so much for watching, my name is Joseph. This is Hype for Games, and let's get hype!